let's solve this secant equation for x between 0 and 360. Now, this is a tricky one because this negative 81 right there, minus 81, shifts the graph to the right. So first of all, I'm going to convert this to a cosine graph, and the easiest way to do that is just to flip the other side. It's kind of like I took the reciprocal of both sides of my equation. Actually, it's not kind of like it. That's exactly what I did. I took the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. That's something you're allowed to do as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, which I did. And as long as this doesn't equal zero, of course. So you always have to be aware of that, that that whole thing can equal zero, because then I would have 1 over 0 originally, which is impossible to be done. So there is there are some restrictions, but I'm not going to really worry about that, because I know the values, I know where the cosine is 1 half, is all of the 60 degree, but it's also at the negative 60 degree, or 300. So I could call this 300, I could call it negative 60, I could call it, I could call this 60 degrees, I could also call it 420 degrees, or I could call it negative 300 degrees. i got to consider all of those different possibilities. So this is negative 60, this is also negative 420, and this is also 300, and you might have to consider more based upon uh, what your argument is inside here, but because there's no 2 or 3 or 1 half multiplied by the x there, I know I'm probably not going to have to go around too many times, I just might have to cover myself because that 81 degrees, what that does, let's think about our, our graph of our, our, of our cosine function, it starts up here, it goes down, back up, like that. I didn't quite do that right because I went down a little too far. It goes something like that. Okay, so let me break this up for us. This graph right here, right there, is the first quadrant. Right there is the second quadrant. Right there is the third quadrant. And that's the fourth quadrant. So let me draw these in so you can understand. There's your first quadrant right there. There's your second quadrant. There's your third quadrant. And there's your fourth quadrant. This is your cosine graph. So this is your theta down here, and this is the cosine of theta up here. When is the cosine of theta positive? It's positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. Look at your unit circle. The cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant because the cosine is the x. It's the adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's the x. And it's negative in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So where is the cosine equal to positive one half. Well, now I'm going to take a line. I'm going to take positive one half, which is right there, and I'm going to draw that line. And that where is the cosine equal to positive one half? It's all of those points on the line that intersect with that graph. So that is one, and that is one right there. And that would be easy if this just said cosine of x equals one half, because we that's very easy for us to find the answers within that first 0 to 360 degrees. But it's not. It's minus 81, which means everything has shifted. This entire graph has shifted right 81 degrees. So it's really starting like here. Remember, this is 90 right here. It's really starting there, and it's ending like over here. So the whole graph has shifted. Oops, it's like this. So since the whole graph has shifted, I need to consider more than just my 60 degrees and my 300 degrees. I have to also consider negative 60 degrees. I don't really have to consider negative 300 degrees, and I really don't even have to consider 420 degrees because that's just too far. But I do have to consider negative 60. So the cosine of x minus 81 equals 1 half means that x minus 81 equals negative 60 or positive 60 and I don't have to say 300 even because when I add 81 to 300 I'm going to be outside of my 360 degrees so I only have to really check it for negative 60 and positive 60 when I add 81 I get 21 degrees x equals 21 degrees, and when I add 81 to 60, I get 141 degrees.
those are my two solutions. Again, if I had tried it with 420, or I'm sorry, 300, when I added 81 to that, I would have been just over my 360 degree domain restriction. And that's why those are my two answers. So hopefully that made sense to you and the pictures help you understand how the solutions to this equation are very much related to your unit circle. And your unit circle, if you flatten it out on a coordinate plane, can be very can also be seen in terms of the quadrants. Hopefully that makes sense to you because you should use your graphing calculator to check your answers and even to help you do these problems.